What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now before we jump into today's first story, I firstly have a bit of an announcement for you all. And here it is. I'm releasing some brand new merch available right now. As you can see, it's a very clean RDTR Redditor design. It comes in white, black, loads of other colors. I'll put a few photos of me up on screen right now. I wanted to create something that wasn't clearly YouTuber merch and something that I would just wear out on about every single day. And I think I've done just that. In all, it probably has taken about six months to reach this point. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but there was so much time and effort put into this. Here are just a few of the concept designs that we came up with, and we ended up going with the most clean one, in my opinion. Furthermore, I've made sure to get the very best quality material for you guys. You know, we've spent loads of time making sure that we get the exact right mix, and uh, yeah, all I can say is, I'm so happy with the feel of it. I've got some other YouTube merch just to, you know, try it out and see what it's like. You know, I've got um, a little bit of David Dobrik's merch here, to be honest, and I can't lie, this is a level above. I'm sorry to say it. So if you are interested in anything you've seen, just head on over to my store. The link is behind the i button, in the description, in the pinned comment. It's even on the merch shelf at the bottom of your screen. I've got sizes to accommodate absolutely everyone from small to triple XL. And there's even a helpful size chart so you can know which size to get. Just for reference, I am six foot and I guess quite average build. And this is a large t-shirt. Also, you can get 20% off anything you buy by using code SUMMEREND. It's on screen right now. That's SUMMEREND. The end in checkout and you'll get 20% off anything. And that is it, guys. If you've got any questions, let me know down below and I'll try and get to you. If you want to see some more photos, head over to my Instagram, my Twitter. I posted more over there. Also, tweet me if you order anything. I'll retweet it, follow you, all that good stuff. And yeah, hope you enjoy it, guys. Anyway, with that all out of the way, let's get into our first entitled parent story of today's video. Homework or not, if you don't go outside, I'm cutting the power to your room. A bit of backstory before I get to the main part. Growing up, it was my father's policy that the kids had to be outside all day on weekends. It didn't matter what we did as long as we were outside. He would often pick at my brother and I if we weren't being active enough. This meant we had to be riding bikes or doing something else. He didn't care if there was nothing to do for hours at a time. We had to be outside. He would often lock the front and back door of the house to keep us outside all day unless it was a short lunchtime. If we needed to come in and use the bathroom, he'd get annoyed at us for taking too long and kick us back outside. The only time we weren't forced to go outside was when there was bad weather that day. This story takes place during my teen years. I can't place this exactly, but I know it was either my sophomore or junior year in high school. That Friday, as I did nearly every day, I had gotten home around 5.30 p.m. or so. This was typical for me as I went to a specialty center high school other than the one allotted for our district due to needing to changing buses at a hub. Being that I got home so late, dinner was less than a half hour later. After that, I still had chores I had to do which took about 30 to 45 minutes. After a long day and being rather the tired from a long week like that, I decided that I'd do my homework Saturday morning instead so that I could get a little extra sleep the night before. The next day, I wake up. About 10 a.m. or so after eating breakfast and getting dressed for the day, my dad told us it was time to go outside. I had a bunch of assignments I had to do that weekend, including some studying. I've been too tired to do any on Friday, so I told my dad that I needed to at least do some studying for a test early the following week. We got into an argument where I'd pointed out that if I got a bad grade on this assignment, I'd end up getting in trouble. My homework was more important than being thrown outside all day. He got angry at me and told me that he'd count to three or he'd cut the power to my room if I didn't get outside. He told me that I should have done all of my homework on Friday. Of course, I went outside for the day. I can't remember the exact grade I got on that test, but I know it was at least a low C. Well, that makes absolutely no sense to me. I just don't understand why you'd force your kids to go outside when they have homework to do. Uh, am I being weird there? I don't think so. I understand why you'd want your kids to go outside, get some fresh air and all that, but come on, you kids doing work inside homework for school you know academic stuff don't force them outside and ruin their prospects in school it makes no sense now moving on to our second story mother forces me to invite her weeaboo son into the japanese group chats for starters i wasn't born in japan i was born in canada raised by japanese immigrants so my japanese is decent last year i got accepted for a hockey scholarship to a boarding school in the u.s and that is the school i attend now at this school there are actually quite a lot of japanese students from japan and from the u.s or canada who are japanese ethnicity 
identity like me. So a few years ago, they started a group chat for Japanese people at that school, where people just chat amongst other Japanese people. Basically, the only requirement for joining is that you are Japanese. However, some people who are not Japanese have still been let in because they spoke fluent Japanese and had most of their friends in this group chat. So it's kind of exclusive. Here is when our friend who I'm going to call Henry comes into the story. He is the kind of white American who is obsessed with Japanese culture and entertainment, like anime and J-pop. So much to the point, he will refuse to watch American movies and TV shows and avoid them like the plague. Now, as a Japanese Canadian, I myself have no problem with that and my friends agree. But during one of our online lessons, I was giving a presentation with screen share. Now, I had my WhatsApp web app on my app bar and I right clicked it to close it and for a split second henry sees it and loses all interest in class he just keeps on asking questions about it until the teacher muted him while i was doing my presentation my phone was getting hundreds of texts from henry asking to be let in kind of entitled but i politely say that it's a group chat for japanese people but he won't shut up so i block his number maybe three hours later i get called by an unknown number so i decline then that same number calls me again and again until i pick up thinking it might be important but no it's an angry middle-aged karen why didn't you let my son into your anime fan chat sorry mom but that's a group chat for japanese people at my school well i'm sorry you have to accept him in because it has the school's name on it and what do you think the school would say okay fine i'm sorry i will let him in big mistake I didn't want to let him in, but a lady yelling at you threatening to tell the school is a bit intimidating. So anyway, he gets let in and he surprisingly types in Japanese. I'm actually surprised, but after a while, we realized he was using Google Translate to type. That's probably another reason why it took him a whole minute to get a short response from him. After realizing that, we started ignoring him, realizing how difficult it was to talk with him, and this makes his mum even more annoyed. The next day, she spams my phone again. Again, and this time enlightens me with her new logic you children better speak in english it is hard for henry to talk to you guys i'm sorry mom but this group chat was for us to talk in japanese otherwise it's just another group chat that's not okay you may not exclude my son the school will hear about this and you will lose your scholarship and you will have to go back to corona land first of all what the virus originated in china but her country has the most cases of all countries also now i'm kind of concerned she is a lawyer i think and can probably get me kicked out with her aggressiveness but anyway i blocked her and now i think she's going to email them we'll post updates when i get an email from them oh mate if you do somehow get suspended or something for this or get punished that is absolute bs what you've done nothing wrong here i don't understand if it is legitimately a group chat for japanese speaking people and henry doesn't speak japanese clearly then he shouldn't be in the group chat i don't get it look i'm gonna look out for an update on this one but i wouldn't worry because it doesn't even matter if your mum is a lawyer surely what she's saying makes no sense and the school will see that email and think to themselves well you know what henry is doing is just weird anyway he doesn't really need to be in that group chat he's not japanese and what op is doing is absolutely fine and hopefully they just leave it to the side but i don't know maybe they might get forced into something if she is actually a lawyer i really hope not for your sake but i just don't know now moving on to our final story of today's video mother-in-law tried to have me arrested for not allowing her in my house this happened a long time ago but after reading some posts on here it reminded me of this when my daughter was little before she started preschool she is now 36 she would have difficulty breathing after visiting my mother-in-law's house or any place that allowed smoking this was back in the mid 1980s when you could still smoke in restaurants and such my wife now ex-wife and i do not smoke Finally, after one such occasion that my daughter was having problems breathing while at home, it was bad enough that we took her to the clinic. After examining my daughter, the doctor asked if we smoked. After telling him no, he asked if anyone in our house or extended family did. At that time, my mother-in-law was a heavy smoker and she was the only person that would smoke inside our house. We had friends that smoked when they visited, but they didn't smoke in our house. The doctor explained that my daughter was showing signs of a mild allergic reaction to secondhand smoke. It was mild enough that treatment wasn't necessary, but we needed to limit or avoid exposing her to people that smoked. My mother-in-law and I had never been on good terms, but it got much worse after I posted no smoking signs inside our house. She saw the 
them but said it didn't apply to her because she was grandma She usually avoided visiting when I was home and my ex wouldn't stand up to her Finally, my mother-in-law came to visit while I was home. She came strolling in puffing away After I asked her politely to put the cigarette out She refused saying that she had the right to visit her grandchildren. However, she wanted I then asked her politely to leave and she pretty much ignored me now I need to add something here. I was raised to be polite and to respect others and that was reinforced by my marine corps training But there are some exceptions to me being a nice guy such as putting my children or wife in danger as my mother-in-law soon found out Since she wouldn't take me seriously and refused to leave I physically picked her up and took her outside at that time She was much heavier than me, but she had finally pushed me over my limits I set her down on the driveway next to her car and told her to go home I went back inside and locked the door behind me my wife didn't didn't say a word but she was smiling because she knew i could get away with treating her mother like that of course that wasn't the end of that fight our neighbors have been old drinking buddies with my wife's parents so my mother-in-law stormed over to their house and called the cops on me claiming assault it's a small town and i know a lot of the cops but the two that show up i've never met since my mother-in-law called them and she met them in my driveway by the time they start knocking on my door they were planning to arrest me However, I'm not dumb enough to open the door. After they hear my side and the fact that my mother-in-law didn't look roughed up, their attitude quickly changed. After showing my ID with the address given to them by my mother-in-law, they step back from the door and talk a bit. A few minutes later, one cop comes back up the steps to talk to me while the other one went to talk to her. His next question actually surprised me. I've had a few not so nice meetings with police. He asked if I wanted to press charges, breaking and entering, trespassing, assault, Domestic violence was not a thing back then against my mother-in-law tempting but no my ex is an only child And i'm not going to forbid grandma from seeing any of my four kids as long as it's on my terms i.e No smoking instead. I said I just wanted her off my property and that she will have to call before coming over Side note after this incident she no longer talked directly to me unless I answered the phone So that was a small victory for me relations with my mother-in-law were pretty much gone I rarely saw her even though she also lived in that small town, but that's a whole different story Entitled grandma trained her daughter well because after 19 years I finally had enough of my ex's entitled attitude and I divorced her Neither my ex or my ex mother-in-law no longer talked to me no hurt feelings on my part now they don't even talk to each other something i'd wish for back when my children were little oh my god that just sounds like a terrible situation why is your grandma not respecting your child like if she's having breathing difficulties then don't smoke around her please come on that is so like obvious did she just not understand the possible health issues that secondhand smoking can cause let alone just for normal people who have who have lungs that work properly but for people that are allergic or have asthma or have you know lung issues jesus christ woman are you 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 must just be idiotic anyway guys that is going to do it for this episode as i said before you can't see it behind the camera oh there you go new merch is out right now if you like the look of it go ahead check it out it's 100 percent cotton the best material i could possibly find the best stuff i've ever made i really like the design honestly it's not like clearly ready to merch it's just you know a nice little design it doesn't have to be youtube merch but if you know you know and yeah you're doing the right thing by getting some that's for sure the link to that is on screen actually right now so yeah please go ahead show some support get some you won't regret it trust me and i will see you tomorrow with a brand new upload peace